Mobile Tech RX, the app that helps you make more money. Don't forget to grab your Magnatech mat, available at most PDR tool distributors. All right, boys and girls, maybe even men and women, it is another episode of PDR Tool Time. We are on episode number 243. This is Hudson Tansy. I've got my good friends, Daniel Grom, who's old enough to be my daddy. I got Vince D'Alessandro, who is young enough to look like my uh, really, really redneck, white trash uncle. Creepy uncle. And then I've got Mr. John Renstrom, who is uh, looks distinguished enough to be my college professor. Gentlemen, how are you doing? Doing, doing good, man. Doing fantastic. Good intro. Wonderful. Oh. Good job. We're you like that? Dressed. Yeah. We're hoping yeah, we, we were just talking John. about how Daniel is old, is older than my dad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, way more immature get that straight yeah yeah that's right that's right yeah oh gosh right. so how was everybody's week doing good i was doing i was doing uh asphalt angels in my parking lot <laughs> <laughs> that sounds a little hot ass angels I, is that like the strip club down the street from you <laughs> <laughs> don't go there don't go go do it dirty on me Dude, hold on that's uh, a, actually a really good name for like a strip club or, or a band right the ass angels ass angels uh, sorry go ahead go on with <laughs> it sounds your like ass a angels. bad motorcycle club that's what it sounds uh, like it sounds like an all-girl uh motorcycle club <laughs> oh right <laughs> we're the wrong I mean, guy motorcycle now, club. <laughs> now i want to go see that r-rated movie <laughs> uh, my boat motorcycle club was going to be the bo peeps <laughs> God. <laughs> really man like kicked every weekend exactly oh, roll on hey, I, I, I would think the ass angels would be an all gay motorcycle club <laughs> uh, that's what i would think it would be as well this is why daniel's talking about it dan you have something to tell us okay <laughs> sorry we, we digress well last week was national coming out week so come on daniel you didn't you, come on out <laughs> a week late <laughs> oh god me and vince are lovers uh, i don't know <laughs> what the heck kind of calendar you guys have <laughs> so my week my right. week was proof that i am finally in my 30s i did had my first ever um awkwardly lift something in my back hurts for the next five days thing. Uh, that's the first sign of old age <laughs> was it on know, the toilet had my, i've had my worked out and i and i and i lifted wrong you know did you know a wrong form yeah. type of pain uh -huh. but no this was i was buying new shelving units for my my new shed and it was like a 70 pound unit shelving unit and i had to lift it up into a basket and when i did it I, and i got done i was like oh 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 no 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 okay well you know what just wait until it happens on the toilet when you're turning to grab some uh, toilet paper and you throw your back out for a week did or that you happen sneeze. to you then you sneeze <laughs> yeah <laughs> or you sneeze and it goes out <laughs> or or you, you got to look forward uh, to next just lay in bed which is what happened to me the other day and ended up with the chiropractor uh, popping everything popped a rib out i don't know what the heck i was doing i was just laying in bed i woke up middle of my back was completely out popped a rib out i had to go two days in a row get everything set back into yeah. place it hurt yeah i had a friend the other day that was like we were at dinner at dinner with them and they're like yeah like they're physical therapists and they're like yeah chiropractic is is a sham it's not real like <laughs> why would you ever go to a chiropractor and i'm just like okay explain to me this so like well you have to keep going back what you know i'm physical therapist i fix you and i swear my point is for you to never come back to me i go yeah i guess i should never go to a dentist get my teeth cleaned then right like, cause I have to go back every six months to a year, right? Like, shouldn't they clean my teeth the rest of my life? No, because things get dirty again, you idiot. Just like your body is a freaking moving, bending, flexible thing. Imagine it getting out of whack. <laughs> but I will say this though. I'm still taking my uh, CBD oil and I just got sent some new rub all from uh, cbddirectoils.com. And the PDR TT discount code still active when still. you order from them. Oh, how about that? Wow. No way. Yeah. So uh keeps me flexible and um I'm hoping that rub's gonna come out because that is making a difference on my sciatica. 
Yeah. You're hoping to rub it out? What? I'm <laughs> rubbing it out. I'm I'm rubbing it out nightly. What I'm wondering is punching the clown. Yeah. Punching. Oh. <laughs> did you did you guys see speaking of which, did you guys see my video on the Fetty that I put out there? It was like yeah, a live video. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, that was, was totally unintended. What the Fetty looked like with the real, the red <laughs> tip, and it was like, oh, wah, 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 wah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it reminded me of a dog, like walking around with yeah. his lipstick. <laughs> a little out. red rocket, a little red rocket, <laughs> little lipstick hanging out. I didn't see this video. Yeah, I did not see that video either. Yeah, well, well, I, I, I did. did. I watched it because I love this. Yeah, I just, well, I did a <laughs> live right, for right, Manson. Right. I did it's it's been a while since all four of us have been together on the podcast. Yes, we should probably talk about some like PDR related stuff. Actually, I want. I, I do want to uh, talk to you about that Fetty tool. So, <laughs> could could we make it longer? No. So I, I want to use it tool? in a motorcycle tank, but it's got to be longer. What's a Fetty tool? No. The spring loaded tool. Oh, the little, like the, the little thing you pop. Yes. Yeah. It works. Okay, all right, all right. I did a live demonstration in, the, in that video on a PDR tool time when I went live for Manson. Ah. It, that was an aluminum hood, and, and I was just using two tips on it. And it's like pop, 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 pop. I, I see a lot of use for that, especially like areas where you don't have any leverage, but you can get that tool in there. Exactly. You know? Well, just to tell you how strong that tool is. Um, now that I know what we're talking about, John Renstrom and I were at the PDR playground and we're over here trying to repair all the mangled mess on a, on one of the hoods yeah. in the PDR playground. And I looked and there was all this paint just cracked and little stars everywhere. I'm like, oh. Who, what did this? And then it was like, Oh, it was good. Dave Strain had come over and he had showed the actual, like how strong it is. And he just oh. freaking <laughs> cracked the paint everywhere on that, that hood. And we're like, we're just going to knock this back down and uh, <laughs> we'll move on to the next one. Well, yeah. Okay. Hey, speaking of, if you, I've done this before, I'm not saying it's a foolproof way tech tip here. If you've ever, you do a small little micro crack somewhere, you can remelt the clear with a denim pad. And I've had What's it sit back up. Denim. A denim pad. Denim. Like denim, denim. jeans. Denim jeans. Yeah. Like there's, there's a lot of people they don't grit from car care. Do what? Three thousand grit buffing pad from car care. Oh, that works too? It's probably about the yes. same uh that's the denim pad. Oh, okay. Yeah. And so I'll I'll use it. And um, because the point of it is, it doesn't um a a denim. Am I saying that wrong? Denim. Denim. It's just your your Houston accent. All right, denim pad. It's the same thing as doing a wet sand and buff, uh, but it 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 kind of it re it like melts. I don't know how to explain it. It kind of melts it. It gets rid of orange peel. It's designed. Yeah, they're called. It's technically called an orange peel pad, not a denim pad, because it's designed to remove the orange peel. Yes. out of the clear and the point of it is basically it gets it so hot that it ba- it redoes the the clear coat where it's no longer okay a texture now are you using it because i've seen these pads for years now especially at mte the detailers because i've been going over to the detailing section at mte and learning about this stuff anyways which i encourage everyone that's going to mte to go hang out with their brothers over at the detailing sections anyways uh I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, it, how are you using it? Are you using it in a rotary fashion or a DA action? I'm simply using it on my Makita drill. Okay, so it's rotary. spinning or... Uh, yeah, rotary, not rotary. a DA. Rotary. Yeah. yeah, okay. And that's a little bit dangerous. You could burn. Yes, I know. Okay. See, I know. Well, that was all I carried. I didn't even carry sandpaper. Um, I see they're now on Amazon, so I'll put the Amazon link up, and Daniel, you can include it in the show notes. Okay. They're Car Pro Denim Orange Peel Removal Pads. You can get them into five and a quarter inches, and I use the three inch same here all the time. And I normally put it on my little Snap On Impact, but this year we're doing a bad enough storm that I'm actually using some sandpaper, and I went ahead and bought the matching buffer from snap on for my uh impact and screwdriver i don't have a drill did you get the so, new brushless one yes it's uh the lithium yeah. battery matches yeah. my my impact that's actually and my favorite 
polisher is that snap on it. They, they just came out this year with a brushless model yep. and it's just got more torque than everybody else's that I found on the market. Oh, crazy so, amount of power and it'll go super. It's got two speeds. So second speed is like 30,000 RPM. So it's a great way to launch some crap across the shop. Even like more powerful than a Makita or a Milwaukee. Cause I love my oh, Milwaukee. Yeah. Milwaukee. It just has a little more torque to it. So you can bear down on it a little bit more. Okay. Um, it's honestly, I think Milwaukee makes snap on uh, battery power tools. Mm. Um, Highly possible. Cause they just came out with a, uh, a leaf blower snap on did. And it looks exactly like my Milwaukee leaf blower. Mm. I mean, huh. exactly. Okay. Question. Hey, granddaddy Groms. I don't, whenever you say brushless okay i see everyone oh brushless motor brushless motor because all my all my drills are brushless yep what's the benefit of brushless over brush a, a brush motor will wear out vince and draws more power Vince is raising his hand go ahead okay vince. what vince a brush yeah well it'll wear out it'll it has little uh carbon brushes that cause the electricity to go around it's i'm not going to get scientific about it because i can't but those little uh, brushes wear out. They they grind down, and then you have to replace the brushes. What they're yeah. actually doing, you might have to talk to the guy down here in the corner, John Renstrom, and he'll give us an explanation. Why is it reversed? There, there we go. It's down there. <laughs> I don't know. I'm in the top right on my screen. Oh. <laughs> but, yeah, the, the brushes are what actually uh, transmits the electrical over to the armature of the motor and actually makes it spin. Okay. Yeah. They yeah, actually yeah. make contact with the armature and they slowly wear over time. They mm -hmm. also absorb a certain amount of that power. So by the time we have our brushless tools, they are more efficient. They are stronger. They run longer and you won't smoke out. Cause if you've ever burnt up a set of brushes, like I, I have burnt my share of me too. tools up and hmm. you get this, this electrical smell. <laughs> yeah. and, you let uh, the magic smoke out of the brushes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. There we go. There, there is our, uh, power tool one Oh one for the day. Useful, useless information for your brain. For a little <laughs> yes, bit. Exactly. Okay. So speaking of tools, speaking of tools, we have a, we kind of have a topic for today's show. <laughs> we were talking today and we're like, man, the, um, the, all the hell storms are kind of coming to a close. Unfortunately, they're kind of dwindling down. People aren't really at the height. I see, I'm seeing several posts of people kind of on road trips right now or headed home, packing up. So we wanted to talk a little bit of what are some things that we think if you are a hell guy during the off season, what should you be doing? What are some things that you should be doing as a hell guy in the hot off season? We're going to be talking to John Rundstrom mostly about this, us door dingers and retail guys and uh, tool tool slinger. Uh, we'll give our opinions, but it will not be educated, educated from experience opinions, just simply opinions. Now I know a lot of hail chasers. You get home, you put your tools off to the side. You don't touch them again until you leave in the spring. Been there guilty of that myself. However, I did start um, in my last couple of years, I'd put them all up in the winter time and then I would take the time to reorganize them. Um, especially up here, I'm not as uh, humid as when we were in Texas. So then I would go ahead, steel wool them all off, kind of protect them. Daniel, what do you treat your tools with? You were talking about oil in your tools. Well, I, I got this one from Vince actually. What's, what's that stuff? That fluid, you fluid film. It's the upload yep. film. Yep. We, we now switched over to it at Anson because, I mean, we get tools in for manufacturers and they're rusty as hell already. It's like, what the hell happened after a week being in Texas? And we coat that yeah. fluid film and they're solid. Yeah. There. Now, um, I'm, I'm going to push. Yeah, fluid film's good. I've never used it. I've just heard enough, enough good things from it. But we do have a PDR tool manufacturer that does make something for it. And it's a uh, Dave stream with edgy tools has a thing called, I think it's called the good rub. And it's basically these like little different, he has different like coarse, medium and fine. And I use this thing on my dent dial and um, it's basically, it feels like a rough eraser and it mm -hmm. even has like, like the kind of like a sponginess of the eraser. Oh really? Um, oh. Yeah. And you just rub it, rub it on there. And then he has an oil that you can follow it with afterwards. So if you want to, 
you know, some guys like to support people in there. Like for me, I could go buy fluid film, but I, I personally, I would, I will go and buy, you know, something from Dave because I'd rather just support a guy in our industry. That's just my thing. So if you want to support someone in the industry and also get some good stuff, I use it personally. And I'm in humid Houston, yeah. Texas, and my crap that, rusts like crazy. The so. first thing, the first thing I do with anything like when I'm restoring like uh, old chrome or anything like that, I I take WD forty and steel wool, and mm -hmm. I do this with my tools. If I if my tools I have I have these uh, things in the back of my truck. Sometimes water gets in there, and some of my tools gets really rusty. So I'll take steel wool and WD forty, and I'll and uh, I'll stroke them, stroke my tool. I want you to try something different, Daniel. Yeah, I want you to try the the Scotch Bright pads that you get at your body shop. They'll either have a yeah, gray I'll use those or, too. Yeah, or red. Ooh, yeah, those, yeah, those are great. Those, those actually the brown the ones. Red. Yeah, brown, red, yeah. whatever. I yeah. use a brown and then I finish with a white. Yeah, yeah. Those those cut well, really I, good. I, I suggest using WD forty with it. Yeah, uh, WD forty one cleans it and kind of gives it a little bit of protection, um, and then you can finish off with the the fluid film or something like that or whatever uh, you want to, you know, throw on your tool, but uh, you even waxing, about. even throwing some wax on your, uh, oh, yeah, tool that's, tool. I've waxed a lot of mine. Really? Well, yeah, whatever you got, if heat? you're, if you're out in the middle of nowhere and you don't have anything else, just auto automotive wax, just, yeah. just like paint wax. Oh no. Uh, like okay, okay. wax. Actually, have you ever used, um, ceramic on your tools? I was just ceramic coating. Mm. No. I mean, it's so expensive. I don't know. I mean, they have to get a lot cheaper. Yeah, but a lot of these these ceramic guys, you know, they get done with the car and they use these little tiny bottles, and they have a like a little bit left in their bottle, mm -hmm. and they'll, be they'll throw those to away. Try. You can pick those up, and they they just got a little bit in them, but that's enough for your tools, you know. Yeah, and yeah. you can you can actually ceramic coat your tools. It hmm. Might have to try that. I'm going to do the front end of my RV, especially if you got like um like a any kind of um pliers or anything that rust or, or like a, a wrench or anything that might rust that uh, ceramic coating, uh, if it's got a gear or if it moves anyway, that ceramic coating will work with that. Wow. That's huh. so weird. I, to, you know, I took that ceramic coating years ago when it first came out and I coated my black cooktop stove with it. And because my wife was always complaining about having to clean up the pasta sauce and this stuff, it doesn't stick. It's <laughs> still to this day. Shit does not stick to that cooktop. <laughs> well, why are you I putting poop on your cooktop? <laughs> well, well it's good sometimes you got to cook up some shit. Shit on the but, shingle, buddy. Uh, oh, you yeah. know, a, a, another use for your ceramic coating, if you're going to go ahead and just buy a bottle of it um, and do your glass shower doors, then you yes. have to clean Yes, Ooh, that's next. Dang it. I need to do oh, that. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. I'm doing that. Right. <laughs> so two things. One, random factoid. You said WD-40. WD-40 never patented their formula because they didn't want the formula to be out there. They wanted no one to know what was in that can. So they have never patented their formula. Do you know what WD, you know what WD stands for? WD-40 was originally designed for? Um, squeaky door hinges. Rocket fuel. Rocket fuel. Water displacement. Displacement. Water displacement. Water displacement. Water displacement. John said water yeah. displacement number 40 and the 40 uses. Okay. All right. Okay. We'll and then number two, uh, ceramic coating. There's some people that a lot of these old school guys are like, ah, oh, all you need is a good carnauba wax or a Zymo. This ceramic coating is a bunch of smoke and mirrors. A shut your mouth and listen to people that are talking, uh, in the detailing industry. If you take some of that ceramic coating, and just pour it into a clear container and let it dry. It dries into this solid, clear mass. It almost becomes like a second clear coat. It's bonkers. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, it, it does. I've not done that. Yeah, yeah. I had a. I had my because my buddy was testing. He tested which ceramic coating he wanted to do. So he bought like some of the best ones and he poured a little bit out into different shot glasses and then he waited for them all to dry and cure and he wanted to see which one cured the clearest and which one was it uh he yeah. uses c quartz finest 
Okay. That's what I was curious about if it was going to be C courts or you one know, of the painters did that too, with clear coats, you know, I know my painter, when someone would come by and be like, Oh yeah, use our clear coat. You know, he would just let it dry out in a cup and see how clear it was actually. Yeah. And usually yeah. if it was foggy, it's because it had UV inhibitors in it that, that, uh, you know, was protecting the paint job. Mm. Yeah. Cause it's a little yellow. bit yellow. Interesting. Yeah. All right. So ceramic coating on some tools, uh, doing, getting things checked out using some, clean uh, and protect your tool, clean but, and protect your tools. And in the process, you should, here's the, the other, here, here's the other thing you want to like do all this for is when you're cleaning all your stuff up and you're organizing before you go on your vacation and go do all your fun things, you discover what tools you have lost. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and then you can make your list for MTE. Yeah. Making your inventory or call up Anson and say, Hey, I need these replaced. You know, you know, it's really odd that you said that, uh, Daniel, because a lot of people that come in to Anson, we get the, the guys that come in every week, right. And they just look for something new or, or, you know, to just buy a tool a week and stuff like that. And then there's the guys that have traveled long distances that come in and you could see the ones that, you know, they, they have a list before they're walking in there and they're really efficient about it and pick out exactly what they want and they'll see something new and get that as well. But what is really funny is when they forget their list at home. They're in a panic, man. They're, <laughs> they're walking around that shop like, oh my God. It's like sensory overload because it is like if you come to Anson or if you come to MTE, MTE is the same way. It's a little bit of sensory overload with all the different tool manufacturers that are there, right? Yep, so, yep. like you said, if you have a list and you have a mission, uh, a perfect example is Stephen Hamby. Hambalicious, he comes to MTE with a sack full of money. So go ahead and rob him before, like, the first night. <laughs> it's so he, true. He's, Boom. he's got, like, a wad of cash with him that he, like, he's the like Indonesian mule. You have to pull it out of his butt to get it. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> he... He's on a mission. He knows exactly what he's buying when he goes to MTE and spends all his money and gets it all done on the one day, and then he's done for the day, and he's able to enjoy MTE. Actually, he's not going to have that much cash this year, and you know why? Why? Because the Anson truck showed up in his neighborhood. <laughs> yeah, but I think he's on vacation. <laughs> he just called me. Yeah, he called me today, and he oh, says, he oh, I just got to see the Anson truck, and he spent some money. He, he bought a hot box. No. What did he buy? Power no, PDR. He yeah, he was telling me about that. Not yeah. power PDR, a hot box. Yeah, yeah he's going to buy it. Yeah, he bought a hot box. Yeah. 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 He bought a hot box. So he's not I have yet to money. master the hot box. Yeah. Yet to master the hot box? Well, it's it's all in the timing. Once you let it rip, you got to get the covers over her face Absolutely. quickly. Absolutely. <laughs> and pretend like nothing happened. <laughs> it's one fluid motion. It's a different kind of hot box. Oh, oh. yeah. Different hot box. Sorry, That's sorry. a different hot sorry. box. Well, uh, California uh. hot box for Daniel is when you spicoli it in the car. Yeah. That, that's the proper hot box. <laughs> hey, and you're the one that. driving and you have control of the power window lock. Oh, it's yeah. so great. Yeah. Someone like, post, one of my friends posted on Facebook recently of just like, what is something nice you've done for someone lately? I a guess they want to see something positive. And I was like, I actually rolled the window down when I farted in the car. <laughs> and I was Speaking like, that was of my stoners and, and all that, the dude I heard today on the news has cancer. He has lymphoma. Lymphoma. He should be all right with that. Is he? Okay. Hope I, so. Yeah. As long as we, it's early. We wish the best for the dude. Yeah. Yeah. Jeff Bridges. Yeah. I'm going to go drink a white Russian in, in honor of the dude. <laughs> the dude. <laughs> yeah. I'm watching right, that movie. So. Go watch that movie. All right, one one more thing here as we're uh, working through our time clock here. But if you're in the off season, and this is something that I've learned only recently this year, that uh, we've been discussing a lot with Anson the machinist handles on the A1 tools, replacing them with the Gorilla Grip, and now Anson's now got the new uh, adapters set and you can buy those in kits yeah the new adapter hubs and the kits are what vince oh what do you mean five ten you can buy one five and ten so they get cheaper as you uh the more you buy you could yeah you could replace all the hubs or your tools with the hubs like that john have you done yours yet I I haven't done them yet. Um, I ordered the hubs yeah. and I'm going to uh, probably sit down because I'm going to do my tools on my second set because I've gotten 
all the tequila door tools, the double shots, my other A1 tools, reapers, all of those with the adjustable handles. And I'm now using the Gorilla Grip. And what I didn't realize was I'm not stressing my body the way I used to. And I didn't quite realize this till I fixed a dent at my house with the fixed handle tools. Mm. And I'm like, boy, that gave my arm a workout. I'm like, why am I feeling like a little bitch over here? I fix stuff like this every day. And then I'm at the shop the next day and I've got the extension on the Gorilla Grip and I'm holding the ball in my hand and I've got the, the uh, hub connection right at my elbow. And I'm just tweaking this nasty, nasty dent. Like it's nothing because I'm, I'm, I'm using my whole body for the repair, not just the the muscle in my arm. Yeah. You know what? I want to see something about the gorilla grip. Um, cause I just got one like, a few weeks ago and it's quickly becoming my new favorite. And I've got to hand it to John Hiley for coming up with this because it's really, uh, becoming one of my favorite handles. Um, and I had some preconceived ideas about it that, one, I like my ratcheting handles and <laughs> I have my ratcheting handles and um, I thought it's going to take too much time to lift it off and, and change it. But honestly, it's the same, same motion, yeah. exactly the same motion, you know? Yeah. So. And, but if you're home for the winter, this is the time to look at doing that. Now, if you don't have a TIG welder or something to be able to weld these, talk with the machine shop or talk with the tool manufacturer that made the tools that you have. But this is the optimum time to look at making that change. It is an impressive difference on your pushing. You know, and really a, another thing too, like like you said, John, talk to the tool manufacturer because a lot of them are slower during the off seasons and they will accept tools in to chop off and, and put the hubs on. But also uh, what you can do is talk to uh, usually like a radiator shop. Radiator shops usually have really good welders. So hmm. uh, machine shops out here. Machine. Okay. Like I know out in LA and, and uh, like out at Anson, there's, West Division Street is just loaded, loaded with mechanics and everything yeah. you can think of for a car. Uh, those radiator radiator welders are usually pretty good at putting down what they call it, nickels with TIG welding. You know, making yeah. pretty stacking dimes, stacking dimes yeah. with with their welds. So it's huh. not brain surgery, but if you're not a good welder, you could probably screw screw up a, a twenty dollar hub pretty quick but we are you are dealing with some hardened metal so you um welding them on properly is going to take a great deal of care so you might even want to just talk with your tool manufacturer um right away and just ask them whether how it should be welded uh i know john from a1 tools released a video there a little while back about how they put the hubs on the tools yeah Mm -hmm. they're at a1 and so you can search that out on Facebook. Yeah, and I put it on YouTube as well. But it's kind of important, uh, like with spring steel, because spring steel you can't let get hot. You don't want to weld it directly onto spring steel because it crystallizes it, and it'll just break. Right. It'll just snap. Hmm. So they have a technique behind that. But with the stainless, if you're going stainless to stainless, you're fine. Yeah, yeah. just uh, a good TIG welder or, or uh, going to – pretty much do the job. I've got to get different tungsten for my TIG welder before I can start welding them on. But mm. man, see, this is where I'm envious of hail guys of that. You do have this downtime like versus me. Like I'll have a slow time, but when I'm in a slow time, it's time, not time to deal with my tools. I use that time to like, okay, it's slow. I need to start adjusting some things online or how I'm, you know, posting and whatnot to get more business. Excuse me. Yeah. Uh, but, but yeah, it, if you, or a hail guy and you have fixed handles, you're, I, I would probably make the argument that you're, you're probably cutting some years off your, off your, uh, your time. And I would just, if you are listening right now and you don't have those, those hubs and then you don't have the adjustable handles, just do it, man. It doesn't make, I mean, it makes yeah. no sense not to. And for Hudson, you just need to order all new tools. See, it's a yeah. simple solution to your problem. I need, oh, dude, if I got Vince can help you with that. I can. I know. I, I would need a second time. cart. 
But, uh, you yeah. know, the funny thing is, too, I, I'm really looking forward to this MTE for technicians to come and actually see the hub sets. Or, uh, you know, there's the open house. I'm sorry, the Toys for Tots on the 5th of Fifth. December. Uh, come to that. You know, you you could come if, you, if you're not in the area and it's a special occasion because I think three out of four of us will be there. And uh, hey, won't you be signing autographs there? Oh, uh, yeah. Under Cowboy Vinny. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> <CV>. <laughs> hey, can you just cool. set up? You should set up a welding station. You know what? I'll, I'll see what I could do. I'll, I'll see. You what, should get a I welder. Should, that would be cool. Dude, if you could get a welder there who's yeah. there all day and he charges like, I don't know how, yeah. I don't know what would be offensive to him, but like yeah, he, I can bring my tool, a handful of cash, cash say, all cash though. Yeah, and when I cash. buy these hubs yeah. and then happy. he does them right there while I'm there, bro. Yeah. Right. Yeah. All day long. I bet Craig knows a guy. He knows yeah. a guy. Well, yeah. the thing is Anson doesn't want the responsibility or the liability or responsibility of welding stuff on. Cause we're, we're, we sell tools. We don't make okay. tools. Just whatever. But, Just put uh, a line. Give me, give me a stupid form. I'll sign it. Good no. night. Well, no, I, you know, if we get someone from the outside that knows how to do it, then it's not That's what really I'm saying. So let me see if I can find, find someone. Find what? someone. Dang it. I want some hubs. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. stay tuned. We'll oh, find oh. out whether Hanson can get somebody. Gosh, how there. Many good, how many great ideas have I given you this month, Vinny? Two. That'd be like a half. <laughs> half an idea. <laughs> but honestly, I, I have to reiterate this one point. It is makes an amazing difference. Um, my hand tools, when you're doing the roofs and inside those braces, kicking that tool handle in a complete different direction where you're not like tweaking your wrist, um, on the, the hood braces doing those, uh, I posted a, a photo of the long tool with that uh, full Gorilla Grip onto it, making it all the way to the middle of a Mustang hood. And those new Mustang hoods aren't open. And I was tweaking out big dents. And also think about organizing your tools. When you have all the handles off of them, it's much easier to organize your stuff when you don't have handles on them. If somebody just made like a tool holder that was all holes. They do. <laughs> Actually, I got Anson's 36 inch tool holder that is all holes. My only complaint on it is there's too many one inch holes. I don't, yep. I don't, it doesn't hold rods. So, yeah. um, but it did wonders. I've got uh, a lot of hand tools right there. Uh, I've even color coded all of my, uh, the ends of my uh, hubs so that I know what tool is what by color now. Oh. What'd you awesome. use? Well, touch up paint. <laughs> Smart. I, I thought you were going to say one paint. shot. One shot, man. Uh, uh, what I'm curious now, Vinny, you can maybe help us with this. The ends of all of those hubs have that little threaded area that the screw for the machinist handle went into. Correct. Can you guys get some colored plugs, like little Christmas tree plugs that would push into those? Oh, that'd be brilliant, huh? I'll yeah. look into it. How's that? Or um, <clears throat> how about plug. tees? Yeah. Whole plugs. Didn't <laughs> wait. Didn't uh, what's his name? Wasn't Chris Dell or someone selling something like that? Chris Dale. Yeah, Chris Dale had like some little I or someone at MTE some, so, had these little marker indicators ornamental that you thing. could. Yeah, like like a golf uh, ball placement type of thing. I wonder if that would fit in there. I don't know. It's about three sixteenths. So it's yeah, when small. you're looking at a bunch of the exact black tool, with the exact same hub, and you're trying to see which one's left and right and, and what diameter is a little frustrating. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. like, you know, I don't even, when I, on my car, I just know where each tool goes. Like I don't even have to look at the handle anymore. I just know like this really? tool is three to the left. Really? No, you put way it back. Too organized. Yeah, no doubt. You put it back in its hole. It goes back in its hole. Yeah, I put things back where. Jeez, that's pretty it's, good. I'm, <laughs> it does what it's told. Get back in the hole. It's funny, I, I I got a call. I got a call <laughs> from my dealership the other day, and they were like, they're like, this guy was like super angry at me. He's like, hey, why are you putting why are you putting keys back in the service box? I'm like, well, I kind of do what my mama taught me, which is to put things back where they belong, and that's what I've been doing for the past like five years since I was servicing you. 
So that's Ooh. why. And he's like, well, there's a car that's been sitting back there for over a month because you put the key back in the service box. I'm like, okay. He's like, well, it needed a detail. And once it's detailed, then it goes to the front line. And it never got detailed because you put it back in the service box. I'm like, okay. I'm I'm sorry for putting it back where I got it from. And it's like, sorry for putting it back. <laughs> like, sorry for doing the same thing I've done. And like, it's this whole hullabaloo right now. Like, everyone's trying to figure out what to do with these keys because like, the detail guys simply can't speak or read much English. And, um, and so they don't know to detail a car until this key shows up in their box. So it's like this like Indian in the cupboard kind of thing. Right. Like, (laughs) and, uh, and so I'm like, well guys, like I, and if you, if you do dealership work, here's a, a phrase that I use. And it's a Bruce Lee quote that I would say that, puts a lot of managers at ease and hold I say, on Guys, hold on hold on hold on what? let us all guess the bruce lee quote okay daniel what's your first guess at the bruce lee quote you killed my brother <laughs> <laughs> okay. i want revenge <laughs> yeah, john definitely puts him at ease come on we grew up with bruce lee so we, you got to give us a chance it, it, like okay uh, okay bruce lee quote come on okay what, what's bruce lee quote that you think he, he said john i did I didn't have cable. I never got to watch it. Come on, Vince. Just tell us what you think. Come on, Bruce. You don't even have one. I don't. <laughs> no. Horrible. Uh, okay, I'm going to butcher it, but... We'd, we'd have to do it on video because your lips have to move at you least... You can at least do Princess Bride, right? <laughs> oh, yes. The Princess Bride, of course. So here's I am, what I tell I am, my managers. I'm Migo Montoya. Oh, yeah. You have killed my, my father. I'm here to revenge. <laughs> No, prepared, prepared to, to die. die. Prepared to die. So I tell I tell my managers, I go, guys, I'm like water. I'm going to fill whatever vessel you need to fill. Oh. So whatever system you need to be a part of, I'm going to fill it. So if you need me to fill up this pitcher or this cup or whatever, I will fit into whatever system you guys need me to do. That's basically oh, you're my... you're just being a yes boy. Stop being a yes boy. Well, I, it's not my company. So it's not my company. It's not my dealership. And I don't, I'm not an employee there. So I'm going to do my best to service my customer. And if they need yeah. me to put keys now, in a fire, certain- fire them, <laughs> walk away. So you're fired. I don't, I don't know, man. I, I make good income there and I'm okay with it. You know, I'm okay. Uh, you know, I'm okay being a sheep and not being a lion. Okay. Which, another okay. side note, lions sleep for 20 hours a day. Just so y'all know. No, oh, here um, we go with lion. And what's wrong again. with that? Huh? Uh, huh? 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 No, nothing. I just What's wrong with that? Huh? Oh, I don't know. Sheep, I want to sleep sheep. for twenty hours a day. Okay. Go ahead. Sheep only sh- sleep for four hours a day. I prefer to be up and productive. Okay. I'm well, you know sheep. what? I'm I'm going to give you my best Bruce Lee quote. Okay, give it to. Oh, he just Finally. googled something. Oh, it took oh, him like God, three hours. Bad. <laughs> Never take your eyes off of the opponent, even when you're bowling. Oh, uh, you googled that. <laughs> of course, yeah, I did with that heart. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Okay, I back to our way. subject matter what we were talking about um it, I, I think it should go without saying but i'm going to go ahead and say it because i think sometimes we need a reminder as men is first and foremost before you get to your tools before you get to all that you should make sure you take care of your family and the, the loved ones around you you've been yeah. gone you're out of town and just your physical presence there as the leader as the person in your home they need you're you. gonna make me cry you know, oh shut up you know what so, the other thing too you know Hopefully, some guys struggled this year with with the hail year that we had, and other ones they did just fine and whatnot. Just keep in mind, you know, not every year is a is a knock out of the park hail year. You know, yeah. not everyone is killing it all the time. So hopefully, you guys, you know, if learn some lessons on the road for you new guys that are just hitting the trail, put some money away, guys. Put some money away. Yes. I mean, Very it, much. It, it, if anything we've learned from COVID-19 is, is to protect your ass and your assets at the same time. Yeah. I mean, yeah. if you have kids, get what? what? Oh, Life insurance. What? Life insurance. Yeah, I got it. Hey, uh, yeah, Thursday, I'm getting my all my blood and pee and crap like that. All right, I don't, 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 don't be drinking poop. Wednesday night. Dude, don't yeah, drink yeah, yeah. Okay. okay, hey, so one guy who I very much respect in this aspect of just living within his means as a, as a hell guy is Billy Joe Verdon. If you guys have never met Billy Joe Verdon, he's one of the, he's one of the best guys I've ever met in all my life. I get to talk to him. I had the privilege of talking to him every once in a while. And that guy still drives. Like, I think like a freaking, like it's gotta be a nineties model, maybe early two thousands model Dodge Ram diesel. 
I mean, the dude could afford could afford like a brand new one every year if he wanted to because he does a, he does well on the hell trail because he's a really freaking good tech. Yeah. And have you no heard drama. heard of the book The Millionaire Next Door? The Millionaire, I'm um, no, but he probably wears Read that book. less sneakers. Anyways, that's him. I always kept but yeah, yeah, at yeah, but he, least a minimum of one year's income set aside. That's smart. Always. So I could be out of work for an entire year. Uh, we even moved that to two before COVID even hit. So, yeah. oh my gosh, that's like, that's like $3 million for, for John. He's <laughs> the one percenter, I man. <laughs> I don't, I, I live well below my means. I just waited a very long time. Yeah, before we, I we noticed, we noticed John. Yeah. 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 yeah Hudson isn't shaved. Clearly you don't see the truck that I drive to work every day. Do you? Oh, I've seen your you driving that piece. Of, I mean that that beautiful truck. <laughs> that 1996 Dodge 2500 Ram Diesel with a collapsed gas tank. <laughs> Not anymore. Well, it's, it's inflated. Imploded. No, it, it back it inflated again. <laughs> That's my okay. apocalypse truck, man. When when the zombie apocalypse comes, man, that truck is going to last. It only has 150 thousand miles on it. <laughs> I think it was even on that movie, uh, The Walking Dead. It probably was. <laughs> Oh man. Okay, so we've got uh take care of your family, take care of your wife, your kids, and then give them some of your physical presence. It's, it's a very good thing. We've got taking care of your tools, uh organizing your tools, getting everything ready so that whenever that first storm hits, you are just ready to go. You're not s- just straggling. Um upgrade your tools. Yeah. What, what? Get, get educated. Anything that's going on during the off season, like, uh, you know, I'm teaching an IMI class on December 7th at uh, Anson. Mm-hmm. There's other classes out there. There's people that are holding seminars and stuff like that. Get educated while you're down. The tax write offs, you're doing yourself a favor. You're getting, you know, better educated in the PDR process or the business process, and you're able to uh, apply these things towards, you know, next year. To make you yeah. better and efficient and, more and smarter. Also, or, I would say, I would say uh, before you say anything, Daniel, I would say that you need a network. There are things going on during your off season that you should be showing up at if you can. A weekend at Anson when there's going to be a bunch of techs there in a hail prone area mm. probably isn't a bad idea to show up to. Not right. An MTE in Florida in January when there's typically no storms is a good place to show up to. Yeah, Daniel, yep. what were you saying? And then uh, go out and uh, buy yourself a tank vice and some tank tools and uh, start doing some MPDR. Oh, a little side hustle. On huh? your off season and make a little extra money just as you will, you know, and uh, learn a new skill. A little side yeah, hustle. Got me, got me a couple of Yamaha tanks waiting. Do you really? Did you even set up that tank vice yet? Yeah, I've actually fixed a fender on it. And, oh, okay. Uh, okay. I want yeah, you to know at you then. Okay. Yeah. I've, I've done Yamaha. some work on it. I've got two Yamaha tanks, and then one of them's got some road rash on it. So I'm actually, I w- I've been cleaning and organizing my garage. Um, the reason why I wasn't on last week was I had HVAC landscapers and plumbers all at my house getting my shop kind of exciting. Up That's cool. So, um, I've been organizing. I found a whole bunch of paints. So I'm actually going to break out and I'm going to paint this tank when I get all done with it. That's awesome. Years. You know what the worst part about not fixing dents on a daily basis now? What's that? Cash flow. Actual cash flow. Right? (laughs) That that walking around. Yeah. Make you make your walking tall money. Right. Yeah. That's uh, that's gone. You don't have that going on, huh? I don't. And you know, the DFW had a pretty bad hail year, so it's not like I'm catching any like slack from other guys. Every, everyone's scraping and pillaging, trying to keep their mouths fed. So I might have to set up my tank vice here and start a little side yeah, hustle. You got to do a little side yeah. hustle. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Cash right me. Yeah, I gotta say, Yamaha. You know what? Yamaha you know what's great friend. about Harley guys? What is they what? always have a pocket full of cash. Yep. All right. Yep. 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 Yeah. All right. All right. So All what, right, okay. Boys. So we got education. Keep your edu- education up. Yep. And uh, also for your stuff. tools and your family. Let's okay. wrap this up with a little yeah. bow now. And- but hold on, hold on. If you are a hell guy, listen to this, and you think we missed something, 
message us or put it on put it on the facebook page yeah. let us know the how stupid we are and how like yeah. how could you miss this and we have no problem being stupid not only that but like if you want to come on and chit chat with us give us a call let yeah us know. absolutely you want to be famous we'll bring you on <laughs> no this isn't the place to do that oh okay <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to say, Daniel? Uh, yeah. Guys, level up your hail tools. <laughs> Don't do stupid stuff in the off season. Embrace the crazy of upgrading your tools. And keep it stiff. Have a good day. Make sure to hit that subscribe button so you can stay up to date with all the industry and tool related news every week. Visit AnsonPDR.com for the largest selection of just about all your PDR tools, where you'll find hog glue and hog tabs. 